So this is the fifth Trainer week Josh. that we've done our Trainer little Josh. ham class training stuff. And this is the first week we're actually going to start soldering up stuff. We don't know what we're doing, but I'm going to try to make a data cable for my 817ND radio. And I'm going to have these guys do it with my direction. What we got is I've got the uh, end connector for the radio to, to bear leads on this end that we're going to put audio jacks on. And so once we do that, I've got a USB sound card that we will then plug into the computer and hopefully we will be able to use this for a data cable. Okay, so we bought some new toys for all this. I got this a while back, this first use of it. It's a uh, work uh, soldering rework station. It's got the hot air gun and also you can set your temperature on the solder iron, which I thought was cool. So I've also got a brand new multimeter and uh, I showed you the cable a little bit ago and I got this nice little tool here for six bucks. So we're gonna test that guy out. And um, so let's show you what we're doing here. So this is the cable we got and we're going to connect. We need to connect to the 1200 baud pin for this particular data cable to one of the phone jacks. And then we also need to connect the uh, data uh, in to the other phone jack. And so that's what we're going to hook up now is we're going to take that and solder an eight inch phone jacks to this. And so once we, what we got to do now is we're going to use our uh, multimeter and use it to check continuity. And we're going to find out which wires go to which pins so that we can then solder these to the correct wires to make all this happen. Here, you can take anything from here to make. Mm -hmm. okay, something like, for instance, I don't sell but you know. No, no. <laughs> Professional wire stripping. Mm -hmm. uh, compliments. So what I did is you probably won't get this in the camera. Is we've established we've got five of the wires we're using. We got the 9600 baud, the 1200 baud, the ground, and the data in, and the push to talk. And so what I did is I just touched to the pin that I wanted with my con continuity testing on my multimeter. And for example, this is the ground. So I'll just hold it on the there. And I think ground we ended up saying was... Uh, ground was brown. It's better. So, yeah. So it's kind of hard for me to hold that, but you get the idea. So that's how we, we did this to figure out which wire goes to which pen. So we've got, in this particular cable, but yours may be different when you order it. I don't know if there's a pattern or not. We got, basically brown goes to ground. The data in is orange. The 1200 out is yellow. The push to talk is red. And the 9600 out is blue. So that's the colors. And then we took a little extra off because we need to take the ground and splice it into two grounds for each of for each of these guys that we're going to put on there. So we need to splice it into two grounds that's going to go to the grounds on each of these. Now, what we're going to do is we are not going to be using the uh, we're going to be soldering to the outside. These are stereo, so we're just using the we're using, it's a stereo jack because it is a stereo uh, sound card, but we're not going to be using this inner right here um, because the device itself is ground. So we're going to be connecting to the ground lead and the end here. And so we can test that to see which is which. Same idea, we use the continuity. Continuity. <laughs> continuity. Um, so we're going to take this. We know that this is going to be ground for that. Um, but then we can take, can you see it? I should be able to see a little bit. And is there any way to manual focus? No, it, there is, but it's no bad. So there we go. It's that pin right there. That's that side. And this one is dead, which we want. And this will be ground. So it's going to be, if you're looking at the top, it's the one on the left. So we're going to solder to the pin on the left and we're going to solder to the ground. So yeah, you're gonna take and solder these to that, and then we're gonna solder each of these to each of those. Now the question is, what's the best way? See, the problem is we only got two alligator clips mm -hmm. to hold those on. This isn't gonna work. We need to go to true value and just get more wire. We actually need to just get wire. Is true value still open? 
It is. It should be. Let's run it real quick. Driving to the, what is it called? True Value. True Value. Um, what we got? We got wire strippers. And we got a utility knife and I got some heat shrink. And we decided not to buy wire because I actually have a bunch of wires down below that I can just, like old power cords, power supplies, power adapters mm -hmm. that I can just scavenge wire from. All right. All right. But now we have the tools that we can actually scavenge the wire appropriately. <laughs> no more, no, no more, more official. with teeth. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No more official Johnny O show stripping. So what I got here is I got an old LG phone phone power cord and I'm gonna cut that apart and get the excess wire out of that. Probably using a little project box to bind all these together would be better. So what I've done is, again, remember, I have no idea what I'm doing. I took all the grounds and tied them together. I went ahead and used white as ground and then the, the ground pin on this was the brown. So I twisted the brown on there, and now I'm gonna just put a bunch of solder on that, and that should hopefully hold it together in place pretty good. And then each of these leads, I'll do yellow to a red, uh, that goes down to the end. I'll connect each of these other colors to one of the reds, and that will give us four wires. So we've got the 9600, the pitch to talk, the 1200, and the data end. First we're gonna take, and we're gonna put a bunch of solder on this thing, uh, to hold it together. I apologize that it looks so bad. Probably if you were doing this, you'd probably want it to really do it right is get a little project box, mount a little uh, a connector platform where you could run each wire into all these wires that are going to ground can share one, one little bridge. That would probably be the correct way to do this. Um, but uh, we're not doing that. All right, that'll work. Now, as you can see, I don't have steady hands. And I'm going to rotate that around a little bit so we can get good solder all the way around. Gosh, I don't have steady hands. Let's get this really good up with lots of solder. I know it's ugly, but you know, it works. Well, at least we hope so. Yeah, let's see. We'll see here in a second. I'll take this out. That's gonna hold. Now what we'll do is, after we get done doing all this and getting these other ones done, then we're gonna shrink wrap it and, and make it look nice. All right, let's so see it's this. So up to 200 degrees, 300 degrees. <laughs> Focus. Yeah, it's already shrinking. <clears throat> yeah. That, that appears to work. Now we're gonna just make sure everything is good and we have no shorts. Make sure every single one of these whites works. <laughs> so that's good. And we should have nothing off the reds. Looks good. Just kind of working it around. It's the biggest one we had. Yeah, because and Tiana then said I'll just cut this off. Alright. Tiana said no. Like no, so. no. Hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. All right. Let's heat shrink this guy. Let's get to blowing. Oh yeah. Stop it. We got shrinkage. You wanna bend them and then heat them? So if it plays a song and okay. <laughs> you want some heat? Yeah, put some heat on that. So we got it all soldered together, and uh, it took me a little bit. I'm gonna just turn my battery on here, turn my power on, and see what we can hear. All right, so let's go back to 20 meter. Because we want to test this on digital. And so I'm gonna go to 14076, which is where all the JT65 stuff is. So this is just a little cheapy sound card I bought. Here's my cable. Got all the ends on it. Uh, we got the two modes, 9600 and 1200 baud. We got data in and we got push to talk. No kind of problems. Red goes to the mic and then the yellow goes to the headphone configuration. We're gonna go modem. We're gonna go audio. 
down devices. Have you set up your hub yet? Is there any drivers or anything USB like that? USB audio device. I guess not. And USB audio device. So now, I've selected the USB audio device as the input. You're getting stuff. Shouldn't it be a... Yeah, you're getting little pieces up there. Yeah, that's not right there. All right, I finished the data cable. Um, when I first built it, it did not work. The reason why is because I wasn't thinking when I read the chart. Remember when you look at the pin chart, that says the pins on the radio, which should be obvious, not the pins on the cable. So if you're looking at your cable and you're trying to map the pins according to that, it's wrong. So you need to reverse it if you're trying to trace the wires from your cable to figure out which wires to wire to. It's backwards because the pin chart is as looking at the back of the radio, not the cable. So I re-soldered the cable. I also realized I didn't put the 9600 baud and I went ahead and removed the push to talk. So you're gonna want a cat cable anyway, so there's really no need to put a push to talk in this in this little thing. I heat shrinked it and then uh, wrapped it with electrical tape, but it's a little cleaner now. It's just two wires, data in and your data out. And then I'm running out to my external USB sound card. So I was able to do my first contact today. Um, I've been able to get out there quite a bit with whisper and stuff like that and see where I'm reaching. Um, but not actually to communicate to any, anybody. Um, I did find something really cool that you can use for propagation other than whisper to see where you're reaching and it's more realistic. A PSK map. There are all these listeners so when you're calling CQ they'll listen and, and show you where you show up on PSK. Anyway you can hear it pretty clearly there in the background. It's, it's working great. That's what the radio is picking up. Um, and then on the screen I can just turn that down because I have the data cable but you can see he's calling. And so uh, it's working really well. Um, I did complete a call um, over here. It was breaking up, so he was calling me back. Um, it's getting late here, so they're starting to get a lot of noise. And he was in California. I couldn't hardly read him, but he gave me back a report of 5.9. In any case, um, the data cable's working. Let me show you this real cool map. So just Google PSK map. It's PSK reporter info because you can go on here and you say look for your call sign and I can look at for my call sign and I'm going to just look in the last hour last two hours because that's how long I've been playing with the PSQK stuff so I'm going to do last two hours and basically it's all the ones here that have the timestamp by them so I can go in here and I'm going to tell it to turn off faint monitors and I'm gonna go back out and I'm gonna go go and that cleans up the map so you can see just the people that have heard you. I just did 2,700 miles with my little makeshift data cable and $14 sound card. Everyone says put your ALC down to where it's just one bar. Um, a lot of people said that. So I'm not sure how I feel about that. If you actually read the manual for the Yesu it says a few bars. Well, you've only got five bars total. So I'm gonna base a few off three. Um, so I'm, I usually three and sometimes it peaks at four. And he gave me a good signal report. I also noticed on that PSK map, I was showing up a lot more. Whereas when I put it down to where it was literally one notch on the ALC, I wasn't showing up on the map. So based on the manual, I think that's where it should be, three to four. I would guess. So I'm really excited. My first data com communication with my little 5 watt radio. Um, I don't see really any reason to spend hundreds of dollars. Um, the sound card was 14 bucks. The PS2 cable was basically six bucks. Uh, the little ends, I bought 10 of the little uh, headphone ends to solder onto the, PS, onto the uh, PS2 cable. Uh, those were like three bucks for 10. That was the total cost to making my data cable, less than 20 bucks, even with shipping and everything. The alternative is to spend like 125 bucks on something that's already built. You can buy, I bought that soldering station for $60 or so. Um, solder was five bucks. So, and the heat shrink was five bucks. Uh, basically it's still 
much less on oh, the little no. magnifying thing was six ninety nine, but it's still a lot less than if you bought a system already built. Um, and again, it's working fine for me. I've used it several days now. Um, so my first call was a success. That finishes my video for my how to make a data cable project. And uh, yeah, there we go. Have a great day, guys. In Hi, my name's Christian. I am a uh, professional ninja, so how about that? Okay, see so, yeah. Yep, that's cool. Catch me outside. How about that? <laughs> oh. I don't.